Welcome back to the Chef JKB podcast. And today we've got the most incredible guest. Not only is he an incredible friend of mine, but he is probably one of the best maitre d's I've ever known. And at the same time, he was one of the youngest three-star Michelin maitre d's in Europe and an author. So please welcome Halil. How are you? Hi, James. Uh, I'm very well. Thank you for having me. Well, look, um, I'm really excited to have you here because we're going to discuss all things hospitality, of course, um, and at the same time about your experience. So if you could um, give us a little bit of an intro about yourself and um, how you became to be uh, one of the youngest three-star Michelin maitre d's in Europe. Yeah, I think uh, my love for food and, and uh, everything what is related to that um, started very way back. I'm spoon-fed with appreciating good food and uh, appreciating people uh, from my uh, grandmother who was a chef for uh, a family and, uh, and I, I used to uh, see her cook and prepare everything with, with, with absolute uh, passion and, uh, and of course it, it turned over to my mom who was a chef and owner of a bistro in, uh, back in Holland uh, where I used to do my homework in the wine cellar while waiting for uh, at young age and uh, at one point my homework become is looking at my mom and her staff and uh, reading the wine labels uh, in the cellar um, and it drove me further to a hotel education uh, management and wine etc right okay and then at what stage did you sort of get into the michelin game well at the age of 14 i started working in my mom's restaurant after school hours and uh, she very uh, early saw that i had a huge passion for it so uh, at the age of 16 I went to the hotel management education and uh, till my 90th uh, I followed classes I did internships and uh, I had to go on a stage or an internship uh, internship to finish my uh, uh, four year of education and that was in Amsterdam in a restaurant called Fermier one Michelin star at that time um, imagine uh, taking my backpack coming from a small uh, city called Zwolle back in uh, the Netherlands to the big Amsterdam and um, uh, being in, in, in on the stage with uh, industry leaders, pop artists and serving them uh, food and wine. Um, after a six months internship there, I landed in the intercontinental Amstel Hotel, famous two Michelin star at that time in restaurant La Rive from the famous chef Robert Cronenberg. Uh, where I actually sharpened my skills and um, focused more on uh, in depth in, in, in wine, cheese and uh, table service. Okay, and then from, from then on, what, what happened after that? Well, um, I was very fortunate um, while doing my study uh, to have uh, part time uh, in, not to forget, a very great restaurant in Zwolle, it's called the Liberei. Uh, currently three Michelin stars. At that time I had the chance to see the restaurant grow from one to two star Michelin but not on a professional level uh, because uh, as young as I was uh, I worked with Juni Boer and Teresa Boer um, industry best in Holland and, and, um, and, and after my final exam and uh, passing my uh, school exams, uh, I was invited actually, I'm very honored by Case Helder at that time, the two Michelin star chef in, um, in Rotterdam uh, to join his team at the age of uh, 20 I would say. And this is where my career went in uh, fast forward. Um, I was 20 years old, restaurant had two stars and within three years I was an assistant maitre d' and assistant sommelier and we were candidate for three Michelin stars. and. Uh, literally a year later, I was promoted to, to restaurant manager Major D at that time uh, with one other colleague and uh, in the 2003 Michelin Guide, we were honored and rewarded with the first three Michelin stars uh, of Holland and, and me scratching my head and saying, wait a minute, I have to leave now the best restaurant in the Netherlands and maybe in the wide area. Uh, I, I knew what Michelin stars were meaning to restaurants, but this was the Champions League, that was top level. So an entire new lifestyle uh, faced me. So, I mean, just to put that into context, you were 23 years old and basically the youngest sommelier slash maitre d' in Europe at that time, uh, in a three-star Michelin restaurant. In a three-star Michelin, certified, um, 
all the respect, many people can call themselves maitre d or restaurant manager or sommelier, but uh, at very young age, um, I had the chance to uh, do all the classes and, and have my certification. So, uh, yeah, it was it was something special. Well, wow. and so how many how many seats or covers were in that restaurant at that time? It's a, it was and it's still existing. It's a seventy seater, and from doing maybe um, let's say 30, 40 covers for lunch, and maybe in the evening fifty, sixty average. Uh, from the moment that we get the star in February, uh, the third star, uh, it went to 100% occupancy with another 100 100% waiting list and not focusing on direct uh, people uh, and guests from the area, but people calling and saying, I want to fly in, do you have a helipad? And I just want to stamp my culinary passport to say I had the chance to eat with you. Um, so it turned to very early mornings in the, in the restaurant till very late nights and uh, we've done that for many years and it shaped me it shaped me uh, and and, and uh, i'm very very happy that i had the chance in my life and career to experience that so, and so how long were you there for in total i worked 10 years for the restaurant um, um, i have to say that uh, mr case helder retired at one point and I was the last one uh, from his old crew, uh, original old crew, to be in the restaurant. And he highly recommended me uh, to the new owner, Mr. Eric van Loo, uh, respected two Michelin star chef at that time in a small city close to Rotterdam. And because I wanted to retire or advance my career somewhere else, but with his recommendation and request, I decided to stay with the new owner and uh, as per policy the three stars become two stars in the next uh, michelin guide um, but um, we managed to 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 actually fight very hard and and to, to keep and prolong the two stars for actually till date wow okay and i'm just thinking you know at the age of 23 uh, if i was to be a chef and have three stars I mean, I think the pressure is huge, but from, from your point of view, how, how did you manage not just the pressure, but your team at such a young age? Because that's quite, quite a big deal. Yeah, what clearly happened is that a specific blue flame ignited in me. I was not just a person carrying food from A to B, from very respective high level. Uh, it was not uh, only serving a great class of wine and having a nice story with it, it was all about a very disciplined fashion because imagine uh, the average spend uh, per, per cover was 250 euros, uh, that's something like 1000 euro uh, dirhams uh, maybe here in uh, the UAE, so the expectation level was very high, so it was a lot of team huddles and team motivations and, uh, and showcasing respect and uh, admiration for the team because 14 hours working uh, in a day it's not that easy so we didn't have the privilege at that time to go to bars and discos because we were polishing the glasses because next uh, day actually a couple of hours later the, the first guests were already at knocking at the door uh, so it's all about uh, admiring people uh, respecting them and uh, spending more time than ever to keep them motivated and to make sure that they understand that they are working on the highest level available. And at the same time, um, you know, managing the wines, of course, doing all these types of tasting menus, because I can imagine it, you know, degustation menu would have been quite extensive. It would have also been your responsibility to pair the wines at the same time. Uh, how did you find that? Um, the good thing about uh, the Netherlands is that there are a lot of, lot of suppliers um, working with direct imports and um, not like here for example that we are having a monopoly or we are very restricted on how much or where we can buy alcohol from or which labels we wish to represent uh, on our wine list uh, here it was literally uh, getting a connection actually a relationship with suppliers and uh, even in the middle of the night if you would call them like listen I had a very big service and I sold out my specific wine can you bring it it was the first thing in the morning on your doorstep and imagine making a nice cup of espresso for the person bringing the wine to you uh, created a bond. So um, as it's 
with many industries, I think produce or product is one of your key elements and uh, to success. So uh, at a chance, it will be in a very nice playground of great produce, great wine, a great cuisine, great cooking. And at the end, it was not my decision to say this is what is best. It is a lot of cross uh, cross references, like asking my team and assistant saying, what do you think? And please tell me if you have a better tasting note here or you have a better suggestion. And I think uh, alone you can go very far, but I think to, to uh, uh, sorry, I have to correct myself. Alone you can go very fast, but together you go very far. And that's what we did to, to, to combine our strengths and uh, have lots of references to each other. And I think that's still, still date one of my key features in my management style, yeah. So look, at the same time, uh, you also progressed your career incredibly well and incredibly quickly, and you've worked with some amazing chefs. Can you tell us about some of the guys that you've worked with? Of course, uh, to start with, from my hometown as well, we have uh, Mr. Yoni Boer, uh, currently holding 14 years, three Michelin stars, and more than 20 years, uh, Michelin stars in his restaurant, the Liberaium. Um, where I actually started in the kitchen with him because I was I used to be a chef before and uh, at one point uh, I fell in love with uh, the lady server um, and and stayed over after cleaning the kitchen and listening to Therese his wife maitre d and sommelier explaining about wine and uh, and offering me lots of uh, samples to taste and um, and at one point uh, she invited me to be uh, uh, a stage or uh, uh, and, 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 uh, and she offered me an exchange program to, to work in the restaurant and so uh, Yoni Boer and Teresa Boer, uh, Holland's best I would say, obviously after that uh, to work with Edwin Katz uh, and Robert Kronenborg in Amsterdam, uh, respective two Michelin stars, uh, Pascal Jalhai, two Michelin stars in Amsterdam, there was a change of shift with chefs in the both restaurants so I had to chance to work with three two-star chefs at the same time and uh, with my transfer to Rotterdam uh, speaking about Case Helder, the first three-star uh, chef of Holland and Eric van Loo, uh, two Michelin stars. Uh, after that I had the chance to do some consultancy and uh, concept openings so I worked with a Michelin star chef called Paul van Waarde where we opened a restaurant, a contemporary marina restaurant called At Sea and uh, it brought me back to Rotterdam uh, to, to, to be on stage with one of my friends from my youth who, where we worked together with in Parker with Francois Kurtz, uh, at that time restaurant Ivy, uh, one Michelin star, and we brought the restaurant to a two star level. And he currently holds in restaurants, two restaurants, one with one and one with two. Um, and um, we managed to make that restaurant the best of Holland for several years in a row in magazines. After what after what after one point uh, you think okay I'm done I'm exhausted what's next for me and um, so I thought what's internationally out there for me and um, managed to uh, take my suitcase and fly over to uh, Six Senses Ziggy Bay Oman uh, where I met you and yes. where we worked together so you are absolutely on my list as one of the best I work with. Uh, and after that, it become more to hotel and corporate life, where I worked with very respective, uh, great chefs. Wow, so that's you know, it's quite an extensive career you've had. And look, at the same time, what I would like to know is also about your book. Tell us about your book. Yes, um, as I had the chance to see both worlds of uh, back in the kitchen uh, and, and front of house, uh, with all the respect, the chefs are very often highlighted as the superstars are, uh, are the people you cannot miss in a restaurant. But I really want to wanted to highlight the, 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 the input of the front of house, how important a server is or a greeter or uh, the hostess, as you can call it, or the sommelier or maitre d'. It's, it's a team effort. Obviously, the chefs are the culinary inspiration and people come to eat and want to see the plates. That's their main drive. But uh, if you make a great dish and I literally crash it at the table by not explaining in the right way, I just literally present it in front of you without passion, I thought it was not a good marriage. So I wanted to make a book and highlight uh, the ex importance of the service, the so front of our. So I said Holland is just too small to highlight only what we do here. 
So I thought, let me jump in a car. Uh, and actually, uh, we had a regular guest and publisher uh, in uh, Parkhoeffel in Rotterdam at the time. Um, so hi to Michiel Houdag, if you listen, um, who invited me uh, to go on this road trip and say, hey, let's make a book together. I, I have a publishing company and let's put on your experience and your love for your métier, your job. Uh, into some pages and uh, inspire others. So, so we traveled around North and West Europe and visited many, many top two, one, two, three star Michelin and non star uh, awarded restaurants and, and, and literally uh, explored, find out and enjoyed through passion. And, um, and of course, with the focus on what is it about setting a table, what kind of linen do you use, how is great linen produced. What about cutlery? How do you polish? What's the importance of glassware? What's the importance of temperature of wine? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and very important, as we are in a people's uh, business, what's the people's passion? Uh, so what is it about you being in front of guests and facing people and uh, articulate in a right way and literally with words, putting your heart on the table and make sure that the food and the service uh, marries uh, very well together. Um, it worked out well. Um, we printed 3,000 copies and um, the success is not that I wish to sell books, is that more to create some noise and make some noise and to showcase that service is a very respectable, respectable and, and passionate job uh, category and uh, make young students of hotel schools and restaurant management schools uh, again, to, to ignite this blue flame to say, hey, you are a great professional in your field and you are not just a server or transporter of a plate. And this is how I see it um, in a very funky, very approachable way. This is how fun our work can be. And I had the chance to be invited by many hospitality schools and do lectures and master classes and uh, still keeps me busy, keeps me busy till date. I mean... That's the thing, I think you're right. I mean, a lot of the chefs get the glory, but the truth is, uh, without the front of house, nothing would really get done. And you want that front of house, especially, I, I know from experience, you, you want you want your restaurant managers and your entire team to know about the food, how to serve it correctly, how to present the dish correctly, all of these sorts of things, especially in this day and age. So many people um, are quite fussy, rightly so. They want to know everything that's going on in the plate and absolutely at the top end level, like you say, um, the Oscars or um, the Bundesliga, or whatever it is, people want to know about food and they want to understand, and they want to have this sort of human connection. I think it's so important at the same time how to welcome people because, you know, I've worked in some really incredible places, but actually it was yourself who taught me that the welcome was absolutely everything. And, and I remember, yes, at Six Senses, we would always get sent the most sort of... Um, difficult or the hardest guests and it was always your job to welcome them to, to calm them down and give them a really incredible experience um, so yeah i mean that's just amazing and what's the name of the book it's called halil asar's road trip um it's sold out and uh, at the moment only uh, written in dutch but you never know if uh, we will be inspired to jump in a car on a play again to, to, to uh, do a sequel and maybe just thinking of a translation of the book in English and hopefully inspire more people uh, in this region uh, and, and uh, to share a little bit of passion. Sounds incredible. I think that, uh, that would be amazing because there's so many people who would need that and um, it, it is you know, an incredible industry to be in to get someone like yourself, to get some inspiration is, is amazing. But in saying that, how do you feel, how do you think um, that the industry has changed? Has it changed? What, what's your opinion on this? Um, I think you have to look at, at uh, the industry in the way of geographics. So I think every region has its own character. Um, I think uh, it becomes faster, the industry becomes faster. Obviously, the integration of all these um, Instagrams and Facebooks and mobile applications to capture moments or experiences is shared quickly in the past you had an experience and you would literally call your friends saying hey wow you have to go there you have to eat there so uh, the marketing tool has changed so that is definitely a significant change um, i think uh, the industry also changed in the way that we are more uh, uh, trend uh, 
sensitive. Uh, I think the benchmarks has changed lately, uh, even if you look at Europe and uh, let me take the example of here, the, the Middle East or uh, the UAE, that unfortunately uh, platforms, and I don't want to uh, to bring them down, but the platforms like Entertainer, Zomato or other discount coupon offerings um, change the total benchmark of what is a great product and what is the price I pay for it. and. Uh, what's the outcome here and uh, so do you go for the best price deal or do you are you willing to pay a good price for a great experience i'm not talking about food only it could be a beverage or it could be just great architecture and environment where you're sitting in and you just have a nice chat with someone uh, welcoming you so that's a big change i would say uh, obviously uh, lots of good developments also in uh, agriculture uh, farming uh, we even can see in the UAE that, that uh, from desert land uh, it's becoming a beautiful uh, land and source for, for from, from uh, seafood uh, uh, development projects to even, uh, I believe in Sarja, there are rice fields in the making. So I think there is a very good mix of uh, product development um, and with uh, the advantage of traveling faster uh, and easier, um, I think uh, we share more knowledge. So, um, and of course, um, people are definitely, our guests are more educated by looking at um, platforms like yourself, um, uh, masterclasses online, and, and uh, simply being more critical on uh, what they pay for their uh, consumed food or beverage. So I think that's, the biggest change for me, what I would like to highlight, that the consumer become more critical because they simply know a lot and sometimes even better than the people serving them the food. Well, you know, I completely agree with you. And for our listeners who are from abroad and not from the, the Gulf or the UAE region, um, the, the vouchers that you're dis discussing, uh, things like the entertainer, Zomato, they do very much sort of the, the culture is very much what's the best deal you can get within a restaurant, whereas not necessarily in Europe um, or Australia, uh, you would get those sorts of things. So I do agree with you that that, that culture has very much changed. And I remember also when you do go to Michelin star meals, you, you know, you wouldn't necessarily take a, a photograph and wait, you immediately tuck in, understand, you know, and, and also sometimes you would, you would take the, the menu home with you. You, you know, get the chefs to sign it or the sommelier or the maitre d' to sign it. And I think that touch has, has gone, which is a bit of a shame because it's really nice to have something to hold instead of just constantly taking these photos or videos. So look, would you, what advice would you give to anyone who is looking to get um, into front of house or into wines? What, what, would, you, what would you say to them? First of all, I really believe it's determination and passion. Um, you have to have the love for what you do. Um, I think many quotes on the internet uh, motivates us by saying do something you like or don't do it at all. So I think it uh, starts with passion. Um, I think uh, generosity, you have to be willing to learn. You have to be willing to sometimes to put your pace aside and say, hey, I think I know I do this right, but maybe you can teach me better. Uh, I always say I see always a supervisor for me in someone else. So we're never done learning. Uh, and I think you always have to work with people um, rather than working against them. If it's your guest, if it's your colleague, it's all about companionship and relationship. So I think put all these things together and if you have just simply passion for something, uh, you can change career easily. Um, I think if you have the passion to learn something and to be fully connected with, uh, with heart, uh, it doesn't take that much more than just time to get on a level and, and, and you will be a superstar. Amazing. And look, uh, of course, we've been listening to you and about your passions and your knowledge. And I'm sure a lot of the listen listeners will want to really get in contact with you. Um, how, how can people find out more about you and what you're doing? Well, um, very soon uh, I can announce that my web website halilasar.com will be launched uh, where I will be offering just motivational quotes and inspirational pictures or blogs and blogs. But even um, I will offer some services by saying, hey, 
let me team up with you if it's uh, just you at home don't know how to fill up your wine fridge on the right temperature or right cellar um, arrangement or maybe it's a restaurant or a project where you need a little bit of support in driving the team and uh, ignite this blue flame um, or um, just for passion uh, goodwill um, is always there so I'm always uh, happy to, to share my knowledge um, obviously, um, I'm working on an Instagram page, uh, Halil Asar, and uh, obviously LinkedIn profiles are, are made. Um, so from the website, actually, halilasar.com, you will have very much of guidance to uh, all my activities and um, hopefully soon to welcome you in um, a respective restaurant or, or uh, F&B outlet where I can uh, uh, engage with you. Chris, look. Um, one thing which is quite clear with a lot of sort of d different people, um, they know how to cook or, or do basic sort of dinner party food at home and things like this, but they won't necessarily know which wine to pair with what. They won't necessarily know about which glass is what. Um, temperatures, the, the setup of the table, as you said before, linen, so things like this is absolutely key to, to being especially a good host at home. What would you say um, it takes? So what, what would you say is the key to being a, a really fantastic host at home? That's a very nice uh, question. Uh, one of the chapters in my book Road Trip um, is about visiting Spain and uh, where we visit the Salvador Dali Museum. And he's a very out, he was a very outspoken uh, and a little bit uh, goofy person to look at, but he had charm, he had character. So quite often um, we ask ourselves, what is my value? What do I bring? No matter what I do, uh, I think you always have to bring character into the game. You have to be proud of where you come from, what's your culture, what is your input, because uh, it has all uh, an impact. So what is your experience like? Uh, where did you have uh, the chance to work, to learn? Maybe not even directly in your field of industry, but it's just by on the streets and listening from, from anyone and learning from anyone. And uh, at the end, uh, of course, is generosity. Um, uh, that's a drive. Um, you know, it's uh, the deepest principle in human nature is just the craving to be appreciated and understood. So. Listening is very important. I think if you are willing to listen to people, basically you only have to react. And um, I think uh, not much more words are needed. So uh, then it doesn't matter on which wine a person wish to drink with his food, etc. If you can appreciate people, understand them, and giving them the feeling that they're understood, there is no wrong anymore. So I think that's my advice uh, in which field you're working. Uh, um, relationships and companionships are very important. Be sensitive uh, uh, when you listen and be very sensitive if you speak and uh, always go with the flow and be part of a team or a table or experience and, and uh, never go against because uh, the ball will bounce back, I would say. Wow, well, that's, a, that's incredible. That's amazing. Um, I have to say we've covered a lot and it's really incredible just to, just to hear you speaking about, you know, how young you were. Um, you were even a chef at one point in a Michelin-starred restaurant, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, I mean, just such incredible passion. I think it's in incredibly rare to find that, not just um, in the Middle East, but I think generally. So you have a huge amount of things to teach and to give to people. So look, we can find you at halilazar.com. Right. Um, any publishers out there who are looking to get an incredible book, please be in touch with Halil because honestly, the book is amazing. I've seen it myself. Uh, really, really wonderful. Halil, I just want to say personally, thank you so much for joining us here. And really, I'm looking forward to seeing what you do next. Thank you for having me, James, and uh, all the best with your uh, podcast further. And I hope. Uh, we had the chance to inspire and ignite the flame to all the listeners. Thank you.